House to Home, presented by Remax Diamond Realty. Hey, hey, the gang's all back together, everybody. I mean, Liz and Gina and I never broke up, right? The Beatles are still around, all right? We're, we're still together. We're still making music. And in this case, we're still bringing you awesome information about Guam's real estate industry. But uh, Liz is finally back on Guam soil. So uh, for today, Liz, welcome home. For today. Uh, is is that your actual home? I know that's a virtual background, but is that your, your home office bookshelf? That's very, very yes. interesting. Yeah, that's my home office. <laughs> very nice. Okay. And Gina is, of course, in her normal office where she has uh, many types of uh, inspiration. And I know, Gina, you have a lot of... Uh, uh, messages of divine inspiration. And that's certainly good for productivity. It certainly is. Keeps your mind straight. There you go. Give, <laughs> give thanks as they always say. Hey, yeah. and, and at the children's arc, we always give back. That's what it's all about. That's, that's right. right. Okay. Yeah. You know, but you know what is really good to conducive to productivity, to making you do things um, by code and by spec and, and the right way and everything is getting your documentation and covering your bases. That's the only way I knew how to segue into today's topic, right? Because we are bringing this up again because we can't stress this enough. Um, probate is a real thing. Several people have to go through it. I went through it uh, with my late father's property. And uh, Liz, you have seen an uptick, um, unfortunately, in the number of local people that have to go through the probate system because of a lack of documentation and property, right? That's right. I'm finding, I mean, I've just experienced a number of them just recently where let's say someone deeded um, property to their son and the son never recorded the document and it, get, it gets a little complicated as time progresses. And then I had one other situation where dad passed and instead of taking it to probate, they sat on it. So five or six years later, they're finally putting the documentation um, together. And of course, as realtors, our objective is to tell them what documents do they need in order to move forward uh, with the probate process. And of course, when you're dealing with probate, there's a number of things you're going to need. You're going to need an appraisal because the courts won't approve the sale unless they have some documentation to show the value of the property. Um, and part of that, the reason for that is they wanna protect the estate and make sure that the, the values are accurate. Um, and I can't stress enough that, you know, when, when someone passes, you may wanna start the probate process early because as time progresses, depending on the number of heirs um, involved. If one of the heirs passes, it complicates it because then you're going to have to do a second um, probate that's kind of linked somehow. And um, is there just so much that could happen the longer you wait and it would complicate it. So Gina and I both have experienced different situations, different scenarios where it gets a bit more complicated, right, Gina? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a very, and you know, what you brought up in the beginning is is the idea that this family actually went through the, the you know, they made the effort to ensure that the title was passed so that the son could have the deed, but because they didn't record it, you know, and that's, I think that's what we want to stress is that if you're going to make the effort to get your paperwork done in, in an orderly fashion, it has to be completed. And, and I think a lot of families here choose not to get an escrow company involved or an attorney mm -hmm. involved, but you gotta get somebody involved to really guide you through the process so that your effort is not wasted, so that you don't just do it piecemeal. Because in that case, it sounds like they got the paperwork done, but because it wasn't recorded, it wasn't completed. And then you end up being where you didn't want to be. And that's why you went through the effort. All right. For um, those, for those yeah. of you who are first time viewers of our segment here, first of all, welcome. We're glad to have you. But this is what we do on this show, right? Owning a home is not just getting a viewing by your realtor and then them giving you the keys and everything. There's a whole bunch of paperwork that you have to do. And there are certain things that you want that you want to do the right way in sequence. Yes, yes, and we get people who, who feel like, oh, I'm given the property and then don't bother recording it. Um, and so, for example, if let's say there's five siblings and dad wanted me to deed it to the son 
And then they never recorded it. And then dad passes. Just bear in mind when you have to go through probate and there are five siblings, one sibling may not want to sell. One si And the other sibling says, well, you're not going to get this property. We all should get this property. So the intent, and I always ask, um, you know, the people who are leaving property to their children, what is your intent? And sometimes the intent is to leave it to one individual, but it complicates it when that person passes and there are five individuals. One doesn't want to sell. One doesn't want to deed the property to the individual. And then there's a battle going on. It's it's ju it just mucky. It just, um, you know, and that does happen. Uh, Gina and I experience different cases. So even when, you know, I'm working on our trust. I'm trying to make sure we get our paperwork in order. And there is no um, default setting, right? For for kids that like, you know, think in internet terms, right, Gina? Because like like Liz just said, there may be a father with five kids and he may say, I want to give it to the oldest or I want to give it to the querida or I want to give it to kid number three because he's the most responsible or I want to give it to my daughter because she's the smartest or anything. But there is no way to figure that out. And if, like you said, if dad right. should just un untimely pass, the heart, Gina, I'm sure you would agree that we're not lawyers on the show and we don't give legal advice, but any attorney would tell you that the hardest thing in the world to prove is intent without document, yeah. without evidence. Um, yeah, absolutely. And even sometimes with documents, we've, we've handled cases where there was documents and you're, you can still have people contesting that and other documents show up. So, you know, we're promoting the idea that if you want things in order, Find out what the exact process is and make an effort to follow that process and get it completed. And the, the right way to do it really is to contact an attorney you know, go to Guam Legal Services. They might even be able to help or, or even go to the escrow company and see if they could help you somehow. Uh, you can even contact us and we'll guide you and go through the process. You know, I have a lot of families who call us. Liz has got a lot of family. Uh, I don't mean our family. I mean families. Others, yeah. um, that, that call asking for advice. And we're glad to do that. Uh, we're not attorneys, but we'll steer you in the right direction. And we'll explain to you who you do need to contact. And we can even, I've gone as far as ordering the title report mm -hmm. for the family member that comes to see us. And I explained to them, you know, here's the report. Now you could take this report and go to attorney and you could do ABC, um, you know, sit down and talk to family and get it done properly. Uh, but follow the process and complete it. Don't just do it part of the way. It won't can do I, you any good. Can I ask you one thing, ladies, because let, let's zoom out a little bit and get like a wider perspective, right? Let's take a macro look at this, right? Um, of course, on Guam, we're a very family oriented, you know, society. And we have, you know, respect and like, you know, uh, and all that, right? But so if the number of people going to probate here is a problem because people just aren't they're negligent in getting the paperwork all together how does that rank with our friends in the states does guam have like a substantially higher amount of that kind of thing happening i don't know about the statistics uh nationwide but we only you know normally concern ourselves with here mm -hmm. but what we're finding is that now there's a need to liquidate the property and uh, if they had gone through probate 10 years ago, it would have been easier to liquidate because then the deed would have shown it passed from the deceased father to the children and then everyone to agree to liquidate because there's a need. But if, if all of a sudden there's a need and you still have to go to probate, just bear in mind, of course, we route, as Gina puts it, we do route you to an attorney, but then the attorney also has their process and they have their their fees um, scheduled by law. And, and then there's a number of things that will have to come into place uh, for the attorney to do their work. So the attorney will have their list. We have our list and the attorney will have their list of what is needed um, in order to go forward. Uh, recently, um, when I was brought a particular case on the front end, I told him, well, you're going to need an appraisal. Luckily, they moved quickly, got that done. You're going to need to talk to an attorney. They talked to the attorney. Um, and then we were able to get them assigned as a, an administrator because you have to appoint an administrator and it has to be someone living on Guam. And that was done. So within a three month window, we were able to liquidate the property because 
the person got all their ducks in order and then we liquidated the property. We got a buyer, we got it sold. And of course they were very happy, but if you don't prepare and get everything in order to get to that point, it could be six months. It could be a year. It could be two years before anything happens. There's so, my, there's my thing. Cause uh, let me, let me ask, uh, let me ask the both of you, but I'll start with Gina. Gina, in your, you know, three decades plus career doing this kind of thing here on the island, you've seen it all, right? What is the longest you've ever seen like a a dispute or an unresolved like a uh, uh, land claim, let's say? Uh, what's the longest you've ever seen it go through the probate process or just be in probate limbo? I I had um I had a piece of property that I handled in Tizen for a family for um you know for family and it took 10 years from when I wow. first started to talk to them to when we closed it. And for me, you know, I'm I'm going to do this year in, year out. So, you know, it did take a long time. So, you know, that's terrible for me. But for the family, in the meantime, while it took that amount of time to close the probate, three members of that clan passed away. And, and, and that's what we're talking about. And, and you're mm -hmm. right, that particular case, had a, a few bumps in the road to deal with. Uh, and so that's why it took so long. The probate process can take long too, but but in the meantime, you're, you know, and this is, this is the thing that the remaining family members kept talking about. This has taken so long that now uncle so-and-so has died and auntie so-and-so has died and so-and-so is on her deathbed. And sure enough, they had three family members who passed by the time we we started the process of selling the property to the time that it actually closed 10 years is a long time a decade mm -hmm. is a long time how about how about you liz what's the longest you've ever seen well, i've had a situation where they've had uh it took like over a year where they had three that passed so not only did they have to do the probate for the estate they had to do probate for three of the members that have passed away now, like Gina, I've seen cases that have gone over five to 10 years where they're suing each other because they have differences of opinion. And I think one of the things I try to point out, what is the objective? If you're suing each other, your attorneys are working on it. And but but the question is, what is the goal? If the goal is to sell the property so that the, the proceeds are being distributed, you have to keep that goal in mind. And when you're suing each other, all that does is tie it up for years and nothing can happen mm -hmm. until everyone is in agreement. And when we're dealing with 10, I, I remembered when I did my great grandfather's um, um, estate, I was the administrator. They had so many clans. So I had to kind of have a rep from every clan to work together and then bring up what is the goal? Because you can't, sometimes you get people who want, well, let's give the property to each of them. But when the time you cut it up, what is what is there to give? Nothing, there's only a small piece that you could give. And if, if the objective is to give it, but that you can't do it, what's the point? then the objective it would be to sell it and then pass it on to the different heirs. But again, we have to do this to say, hey, what is the goal? What is the objective? And to meet that goal, everybody has to be in unison. Everyone has to agree. Otherwise, it'll snag it for many years. And of course, everybody says, oh, don't worry about it. We, we can all figure it out. Like, we'll all be on the same page and everything. Once money starts getting involved, there's a reason why people say money is the root of all evil. And we're not saying people are just, are bad and everything like that. You would be surprised at how how group dynamics gets kind of like pulled apart when, when money's involved. Yeah, you know, one of the things I find when money is involved, you, you want to draw the picture. If we sell it, this is what it's going to look like and break it down because sometimes you talk money and it gets, everybody gets drawn into the drama of how much everybody gets. But by the time you break it down, you may only get 50 bucks, a hundred bucks, depending on how many in the clan. 
So what's the point in arguing? Because if you take it to the system and fight each other, you've spent more money with attorneys versus trying to resolve the issue and distribute whatever funds were left. Now, we've seen families where by the time they're done, there's nothing left to distribute. Aye. Well, I mean, part of the problem, too, is to get probate started, there are upfront costs. Yes. And the cost of subdividing. I mean, lucky if your family has enough property so that you can say we don't all agree on what we want to do with it. So let's split it up. And lucky if you have enough property to split it up. But then there's the cost of doing that. So I've actually I'm helping a few families that right now they they want to do the probate, but the cost of doing the probate, the cost of doing the survey work, somebody's got to front that money. Either I mean, you've got to find somebody in the family who can front the money or a group of them get together and pull their money together. But but that's one of the burdens and hardships about doing the probate. If you don't have the money up front, you have to get creative in how to get that accomplished. And I actually, you know, I know a couple of attorneys who are getting really creative on moving their probates along because they're using creative mechanisms to get these things worked out. But yeah, it, it's, you know, it's about the disputes that sometimes come up, but it's also about the cost that some of these families cannot bear. Uh, and so that's why we're promoting the idea that you get this done while everyone's still around and you could talk to each other and get the paperwork completed and go record it, as Liz is pointing out, get it recorded, get it done. So we don't have to have this conversation with you. Exactly. I think that that's the key thing. It's like if, if you come from a family of either two siblings or like, you know, like my my dad's um, family is he's the, he was, was the oldest of 10. Uh, they at least talked about it amongst themselves and they said, OK, this is what we know Tata would want to have done, like with the property and everything. We want to honor, you know, our late father's um, wishes and everything like that. And now let's at least, you know, like kind of be in principle, like on the same page. And then, you know, you have to bring the attorneys into it at some point to formalize it. But at least, yeah. you know, at least you have the discussion and the intent is stated. Right. And everybody has to be in agreement. Otherwise, it throws it out the window. <laughs> yeah. OK, now, the final final question, though, because, again, this is something unique to our culture. Right. Liz, with, uh, you know, a lot of young people don't really know what like they hear a lot about us talk about, like the Antigua way or, you know, the old school values and everything like that. How mm -hmm. does the Antigua value of Chamorro, Filipino, you know, like Micronesian culture, how does that kind of weigh into, you know, how land disputes are actually resolved here without I, going I to the think, attorneys? I think um, times have changed because I remember the Antigua way, it's the boys or the older child that would get it. But that times have changed. I don't think we've gone that route anymore. And there's usually a discussion. But again, if you're the dad, and you say, well, Johnny's going to get this, and you put it in writing, well, then darn it, Johnny's going to get it. That's but true. if you didn't put it in writing, and it wasn't recorded, all bets are off. That's free for all. And bear in mind, all the heirs have to be uh, notified. Now, a lot of now, I want to bring this up. Sometimes we have families that think, oh, so-and-so passed away. Uh, he's not included. But if that person who passed away has children, they have rights. And I've seen it happen where, oh, so-and-so is gone. We're not including him anymore because he died. But they forgot to, to notate that he's got five kids. Those five kids have rights. That's true. Okay. And then Gina, if I, Gina, if I may, um, how is this in your, with your Palauan heritage where women are absolutely, you know, not just the figureheads of the, of the village of the household and everything like that, but they're just the decision makers and they're the Queens. <laughs> yeah, but I still think, I still think it's, it's a decision between husband and wife. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, okay. you know, depending on who passes first, uh, you know, my, my dad, before he passed, he had said what he, he told my mom what he expected. And then my mom probably changed that a few times along the way as we, you know, when, when, uh, if we took care of her great that month, she changed her mind. If one of her favorite grandchildren, they were all her favorites, but if one of them showed up, then it was going to him. She changed her mind so many times that by the end of it all, we had absolutely no idea what she wanted because she had changed I... her mind too many times. 
So we just went with the old way. It goes to the oldest. And luckily, there were seven of us. We all agreed that if that's the old way, then that's what we're going to follow. And it went to the oldest. But you still have to go through probate because my parents did not put the paperwork in place. And so, you know, it boils down to cost. Now, who's, you know, of course, it's it's now a burden for the family member. You got to take it to probate and pay for the probate and go through the motions. And, you know, that's what we're trying to avoid. Okay. So an, out, an, ounce of, an ounce of prevention. Yeah. An ounce of prevention will really save you, you know, years and years. And as Gina said, tragically, in some cases, decades of headache and thousands and thousands of dollars and everything like that. It, it just, just put in the work initially, people. That's what we're really trying to get across. Yeah. And we're willing to give you help. So let us know. There give you us go. a call. Again, it's what we do here prevention. on the show because at House to Home, we really, really care about you. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's okay. right. All right, ladies, thank you so much. Whew, I, man, I, I, I knew we weren't going to get through, through 2024 without talking about probate at least once and everything like that. So at least we got it done before Thanksgiving. Okay, well, hey, happy Thanksgiving. Have a happy great Happy Thanksgiving. One. Thank you. House to Home, presented by REMAX Diamond Realty.